Well, good afternoon, and thank you for being here. And before I begin, I want you to know that my presentation comes with a disclaimer, so kindly read that before I begin. I was actually privileged this summer to witness an amazing sunset. And um, as sunsets are prone to do, this one kind of crept up on me unannounced and caught me completely off guard. But once I realized it was actually going to happen, I made a deliberate choice to give this sunset my total and undivided attention. I dropped everything that I was doing. And for roughly 12 minutes or so, I began to feel my vibrational level rise and rise a little bit higher and just a little bit higher until finally I entered, um, I entered a state, for the lack of any better word, of euphoria. It was like an utter and total bliss. And then, of course, um, the sunset started to subside and diminish and eventually disappeared, and it took with it that feeling of euphoria. But I was allowed for a little while to bask in the afterglow. That was pretty nice. And I said to myself, Lordy, I really like it when I feel that way. And then I asked myself, I wonder why if it really is true that I love that delicious feeling so much, why I don't experience it more often? Because I really do like it. This is my feelings chart. I mean, I created this self, this myself to kind of represent my emotional range, my feelings, the way I see them. And I've kind of noticed that adults tend to aim for the flatline experience. It seems to be that the flatline experience to me isn't actually a feel-bad area, but it's not really a feel-good area, too. It's mostly tainted by fear. It's as though adults have said to themselves, well, rather than run the risk of falling desperately below the flatline experience, I'm going to choose to feel nothing at all. And they pass a large part of their lives in that state. And they get pretty good at various techniques to stay there, you know, like immersing themselves in work or spending hours upon hours watching television or maybe even some addictions, anything to keep from slipping below the flat line. I also notice that it seems like people are generally more comfortable, if they are going to get out of the flat line, they're more comfortable feeling those feelings below the flat line. I know that there's been a lot of studies out there that's pretty well proved that there are people who have spent the largest portion of their life in a depressed state, maybe even borderlining on despair. I have never yet read anything out there where there has been anyone that has spent the largest portion of their life in a state of ecstasy. And I'm questioning, why is it that we're more comfortable with slipping below the flat line than we are with soaring to the top of this chart. These aren't my relatives, but they could have been. I mean, I came from a long line of kinfolk that sort of adhered to the philosophy that life is a test and that we're here mostly to experience some sort of suffering and sacrifice. And that if we get really, really good at that, then someday, more than likely in the afterlife, we'll get to have 
that undiluted joy that we so desire. And I received a really generous serving of this point of view. However, when I was left to my own devices as a child, I generally felt more like this. Or even like this. But naturally, as I grew up and entered my adult life, I carried with me that legacy that my family had so generously bestowed upon me, and that became sort of my filtering system in part for all the experiences in life that I had to pass through and help to form, to some extent, my world view. Until, until I started waking up. And for me, there was an actual moment that I can pick out. And uh, the waking up process is still going on. But once I began to go through the waking up process, I started to pay attention to my own feelings a lot more. And once I began to play around with the possibilities that I could control thoughts and change that filtering system a little bit, that I found myself starting to return more and more to this playful, creative child that I once was. That isn't me. That happens to be my granddaughter. She's so cute. <laughs> OK. <laughs> there are a number of techniques now and strategies that I play around with that um, seem to help me to stay above the flat line for longer periods of time and, for, and more often. I seem to be able to visit that area more often by using some of these strategies and techniques. Techniques, And actually, there are a lot of them. But I'm really only going to talk about one of them today. Because I recognize that all human emotions are valid. They're all part of the human experience. I've just sort of made a decision that I want to spend less time below the flat line. And when I am there, I want it to be brief and quick, learn my lesson, and get myself back above the flat line. And I want to soar as high as possible, as often as possible. And why? Well, honestly, just because I want to feel good. That's really the reason. And today, I'm going to share the one thing that I do that has made a remarkable difference in my life. And that is, I have made a very serious decision to limit bad news. Now, in my opinion, there's at least two ways that bad news can come to me. It can come to me through the media, and it can come to me through gossip bears, and doomsdayers, and naysayers. Uh, the media is actually the easiest uh, to uh, manage in your life. I mean, all you really have to do is turn off the TV, stop reading newspapers, stop listening to the radio, and refuse to read the news stories on the internet. I mean, it's just that plain and simple. I mean, most of the information that our media sources provide for us today, and there is an overabundance of it, we're oversaturated with it, is based on fear and misery. And some of it's real. Some of it's imagined. Some of it is invented. And some of it is just plain weird. But 99% of it is bad news. So I have banned it from my life. Done. Now, gossip bears and doomsdayers, they're a little bit more difficult to manage, but with some practice, you can experience some success with them as well. I have found that gossip and gossipers are basically the ordinary person's way of being a journalist. I mean, think about it. They even have <clears throat> their unnamed sources that they have to protect. So whenever somebody comes to you and the first words out of their mouth are, I can't tell you who told me this, but trust me, they're a reliable source. Brace yourself, because they're getting ready to tell you some bad news, or they're getting ready to tell you something very unflattering about somebody else. Don't engage. Seriously, don't engage. Change the subject. 
take that much needed bathroom break that you have been postponing for so long. Or rely on one of those apps that you have on your cell phone that fakes an incoming call. I mean, if you can't say something nice about someone, then don't say anything at all. And the more that you practice this, and I guarantee this, the more you practice it, the easier it will become. I mean, if these people that are bringing this bad news to you or this unflattering information to you, if they don't raise their vibrational level to meet yours, then they will just vibrate out of your life by choice. And they'll gravitate towards somebody out there who's just dying to hear the bad news. Soon, though, you're going to find that you're not going to see the bad in very many people anymore because you won't be looking for it. That's it. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, Teresa, don't you want to be an informed citizen? And my answer to that is, heck no. I mean, there are just tons and tons and tons of people out there who are managing and distributing the bad news. Some of them even make a very good living at it. They can have that job. But somebody has to have the job of managing the good news. And I want that job. Why? Because I just want to feel good. More and more, I want to live on the upside of the platform. A daily dose of euphoria is great by me. If I'd been inside my house that evening of the sunset, if I'd been glued to the TV watching the news, I would have missed a dose of major feel-good. Thank you.